Hi, my name's Dave and today I'm going to be showing you a step-by-step -step guide on how to replace a DVD drive. So, quick safety tip just before we get going. Just touch an unpainted part of the case for about 10 seconds just to ground yourself. Now, to get to the DVD drive, you need to take one of the side panels off of your case. So, the side you need to take off is opposite these ports on the case. So this one, we need to take this side panel off. So I'll just remove this. Now this one comes off quite easily because it just has a handle on the side. But the cases tend to vary. Some of them you need to remove the top panel first and then the side panel. Or these panels might be all in one. So you have to take off all of these screws on the outside first and then remove the whole thing. Now some of these side panels, they might have a fan on the side of them, in which case you just disconnect the fan's connector from either the motherboard or the power supply. Right, next thing, we can remove the cables from the back of the DVD drive. You probably can't see this too well, but uh, I'll show you a close-up of this in a moment. Now these ones, I'm just removing the power cable from the back of the drive and they can be quite stiff to pull out. So that's the power cable and also you need to remove the data cable from the back of the drive. Now some of the older drives also will have a sound cable uh, that's plugged into the back of the drive but this is quite unusual these days. Now this would be secured, the drive itself would be secured with either screws or some kind of fixing like this one. Now these are quite easy to take out. You can just turn this dial and pull it straight out and that releases the drive itself. Now, if yours is held in by screws, it may be that you have screws on the other side of the drive as well, in which case you'd have to remove the other side panel. Now, some of the cases you have to remove the front panel as well to get the drive out, uh, in which case you just remove some of the clips from back here on the case. On this case in particular, I can just remove Some of these hooks that unclip, so we can get to the drive. Just remove the second one here with the screwdriver. There, now you can clearly see the DVD drive and it should slide out of the case quite easily. Right, when you take your drive out, it may be that it has rails on either side. I'll just show you one of those. Right, you might you might have rails like this that are either pushed on or screwed on. If you do, just take them off and put them onto your new drive. Right, this one doesn't, so you don't have to worry about that. Okay, let's take a look at the back of the drive now. There are two types of drives, a PATA and an SATA. This drive here is an SATA drive. You can tell this by the shape of the ports here. If your drive has ports like this and had cables in the back of it like these, then you have an SATA drive. In this case you can buy yourself a Blu-ray SATA drive or a DVD SATA drive. By the way, I'm calling this an SATA drive, but some people refer to it as a SATA drive, but they're both the same thing. This is the other type of drive, a PATA drive. If the back of your drive has ports like this, and cables were plugged into the back of it like these, then you have a PATA drive. These types of drives are only found in older computers, so it's less likely that you'd have a drive like this. 
I don't think these PATA drives are manufactured anymore, so you'd probably only find one on places like eBay. It should be easy enough to find a PATA DVD drive, but PATA Blu-ray drives are very difficult to find. If you do have a PATA drive, take a look at the back of your original drive. There's a jumper that will be set to either Master, Cable Select or Slave. This is sometimes written on the drive as CS, M and S. Whichever your original drive is set to, set your new drive to the same setting. So for example, if your original drive is set to Master, then set your new drive to Master as well. If you do have to move the jumper, it can be moved quite easily like this. Quickly going back to the SATA drive again, if you do have one of these drives, you don't have to set any jumpers, so these drives are a little easier to replace. So once you have your new drive, put the railings on either side if your original drive had railings with it. Now make sure it's the right way up and slide it into the case where the original drive once was. Now, I'm just going to line up the holes and secure it into place with however your drive was secured. Next, for this case in particular, I need to pop in these black parts to cover up the drive itself. Next we need to put in the data cable. Now, if your drive had a sound cable as well, don't forget to put that back in as well. Right, now we can put the case back together, pop the side panel back on, and that's it. Thanks for watching my video, if you liked it please give it a thumbs up and if you haven't already please subscribe to my channel. Bye for now, see you next time.